new love. He's got the intellect, yes, he's got the mind of a great philosopher. Uh, hey there. So, hello and welcome to episode three. Um, I promised that we were going to do a little bit of SolidWorks um, stuff today. So, let me just uh, go ahead and open that up. Um, and I brought some parts from the last bag that we filled. Um, so let's just dive right into it. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do actually is let me close that and make a folder for all the Monroe um, F parts. Okay, so I can save everything in there. Um, so the easiest uh, part to model um, is a washer. So I'm going to take the uh, the rather the larger washer um, and model that. So I'm just going to create a new uh, part. Okay, and we get this uh, basically blank screen. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is sketch out the um, base of the washer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a sketch, and the first time you open a sketch, it asks you what plane do you want to draw that sketch on. I, I always like to choose the top plane, so I'm looking down on the part. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to measure the uh, washer with, a, um, with my calipers. Um, so it says 0.505 inches. Um, it's probably, you know, actually half an inch, but I'll just go with 0.505. Um, so I'm going to select my circle tool and I get two different circle types. Um, one I can specify the center point and then the radius and the other I can specify three points and it'll draw a circle. So um, I'm just going to use the center circle. So I'm going to snap to the central point, click and draw out a circle. It doesn't matter how big it's going to be because now I'm going to go to the smart dimension tool and I'm going to click on the circle and I'm going to tell it what its diameter is and it was 0.505 uh, inches. Uh, my uh, my uh, SolidWorks is set up by default in inches and set up by default to display three uh, digits of precision. Um, if you don't know how to do that, check on the web. Anyway, uh, that's it. That's my base. So now I can exit the sketch. Okay, so I've got this circle. So now the next thing I'm going to do is go to features and I'm going to extrude that sketch. So basically I'm going to give it a third dimension. So basically uh, on the left side it's asking me how thick do I want that washer and I'm going to measure the washer thickness and this says 0.064 inches. So I'm just going to select here 0.064 inches and the type is basically blind. I'm not actually going up to a particular vertex or a surface. I'm just, you know, saying blindly um, extrude this this to 0.064. So I'm going to click the check mark and there it is. So now I think it's alt that I press. Yeah. So sometimes it's a little hard to remember all the uh, various keystrokes. So so there's the, the basic shape of the washer. Obviously it doesn't have a hole in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a hole in it. So I'm going to, um, here is my uh, view orientation. So I'm going to look down at the top. There we go. And I'm going to draw another sketch. And it asks me uh, to select a plane or a face or an existing sketch. So I'm just going to select this this plane. I could always uh, open up this little thing and say, you know, what plane I actually want on it, but in this case I can just click on that plane. So now I've clicked on the plane, so basically I'm drawing on the top side of the, uh, the big extruded circle. I'm going to select my other circle tool. I'm going to draw it out, doesn't matter how far, um, and then I'm going to select the dimensioning tool and dimension that um, circle. So now I have to find out with my calipers um, how big the inner hole is. And my calipers say it's 0.165. Or 
you know, 0.165 inches. So 0.165, done. So I exit the sketch, and remember, sketches are always two-dimensional things. Um, so, of course, if I look at this, basically that circle is simply drawn on uh, the um, little blank that I've got here. So now what I've got to do is I've got to make this circle cut through the entire thing, which is another feature, and I'm going to select Extruded Cut, which basically means I'm going to take my circle and extrude it, just like I extruded the base except this time it's going to cut. And basically I'm telling it to cut blind. Um, I, can, uh, I don't want to um, cut blind because then I have to specify how far I want to cut down. Uh, instead, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to say cut through all. Okay, and that basically means I start from here and cut downwards through all. You can actually change uh, the direction that it's going to cut, or you can say through all in both directions, and then it'll cut in both directions. But in this case, I'm just going to uh, select, um, well, okay, through all both. Hit OK. Cannot locate end of feature. Well, that's nice. So let me stop that and start it over with. Sometimes, honestly, SolidWorks does a bunch of things that make no sense to me. So there it is, through all, hit OK, and there it is. Um, I've got a washer. And that's it. That's all there is to uh, modeling a washer, or modeling this particular washer. So I'm going to save as. So now I get to specify, um, let's see, where's my folder? Uh, here we go, Monroe F parts. So now I gotta give it a name. So I'm just gonna say that it's a um, washer from bag five. Um, big washer from bag five. Um, at this point, I don't really know what to call it. You know, I would give it a part number, but right now um, I haven't really designated which part is which, so I can do that later. Um, so I'm just going to call it that. I'm going to save it, and I'm done. Uh, so now, if I wanted to, I could export it into different properties, uh, into different formats. So I would do another save as and then I can select any one of these. Um, STL, uh, as I explained before, is good for 3D printing. Uh, 3D printers basically use STL. Um, the only problem with STL, of course, is that it's made out of triangles and the sides of the triangles are flat, which means you can't do arcs. Um, all is not lost, however, because if you do click STL, um, you can click on Options, and then you can uh, you can see uh, what the tolerance of the parts are going to be. So this, so basically we're seeing that for coarse resolution, um, the tolerance is 0 0.0008, which is basically about a thou. Um, and that basically means that any point on the circle, any point on the actual part, uh, the, the STL version, um, is going to be no more than uh, a little less than a thou off of the actual circle. Um, you may not want that. You may want fine, which gives you um, three-tenths of a thou, or you can select custom. And of course, uh, the, more, uh, the more triangles you have, the better your tolerance. So for example, if I go to course, I have 248 triangles with only 70K. If I go to fine, or course, fine. I get about 50% more triangles, a little over 50%. Um, and obviously, the more complicated the part, the more triangles you'll need. And some 3D printers, um, like for example, Shapeways, has a limitation on the number of triangles and the size of the file. So, um, so I'm not going to uh, output that at this point. Um, there are a couple of other three-dimensional um, uh, file formats that are fairly uh, common. Uh, one is IGS and one is STEP. Um, 
the only 3D printers that I've really seen take STL because that is a very easy uh, to understand file format, especially when it's in ASCII. Uh, STEP and IG uh, S are kind of more professionally type um, ver uh, formats. So, um, so now in terms of uh, like drawings, um, you don't select any of those. You don't really need to. Um, you can <clears throat> you can actually turn this into a drawing. Uh, and the way you do that is you simply go to File, I think it's File, Make Drawing from Part. So what that's going to do is you can select a template. Um, normally you would have just drawing. Um, I've, draw, I've drawn my own template which has a little uh, Creative Commons logo on it. Um, so I can hit OK. Um, and basically this is the sheet that you get. And then you get to specify uh, what view of drawing you want. Um, so uh, you can select a 3D drawing or a top drawing. So let's just drag a top drawing on here. And then if you move the mouse around, you can draw um, perpendicular versions. So there's that. And you can actually draw three-dimensional versions just to show what it would look like. So I can click on that, um, and that's all I want, so I'm going to hit Escape, and there I have three versions, uh, three views. Um, this three-dimensional view is really uh, only good for uh, showing you what the final part is supposed to look like. Um, the other drawings, the other views, are good for actually manufacturing this thing. Um, so what you would do is you would dimension all of these things um, using the smart dimension tool. You can just say, you know, there's that dimension, there's that dimension, there is that dimension, and you're basically done. Um, aside from specifying your tolerances, like uh, plus or minus 0 .001, uh, and aside from specifying the material and the type of finish, you know whether it can be smooth or how rough it can be, um, uh, any machine shop should be able to take this drawing and turn this into an actual part. Um, so that's what would happen if you didn't go the 3D printing route. With 3D printing, you don't need this this drawing at all. Um, with 3D printing, the file is enough. Um, but obviously, if you want to see what the measurements are on the actual part, you would use a drawing. Um, I'm not going to do drawings um, for this thing. I'm just going to keep everything in SolidWorks format. So let me just uh, go ahead and close this and not save it. So there we go. Um, there is a washer. So there's another washer. Um, so I'm simply going to open uh, new, make a new part. Okay, so this washer is the really thin one that I found. So what I'm going to do is again, I'm going to start with a sketch on the top plane. I'm going to start with the outer outline of the washer. And let me measure that. And the washer is 0.625, all right, which is nicely um, five-eighths of an inch. So I can simply say, like, for example, five-eighths, and of course it'll compute 0.625. So that's done. Um, now I will extrude it. And the thin washer, in this case, is, looks like uh, 0.0067, yeah, 0 0.006, 0 0.007, let's call it 0 0.007, is fluctuating between those two. So I'm going to, oops, stupid cat. My cat is, is nudging my mouse button. Um, so I'm going to extrude this, and uh, I'm going to tell it that it's 0 0.007 inches blind. Okay, that's pretty thin. Hit OK. And now I'm going to look at the top. 
Okay, and now I just need to sketch the inside. Um, select that face. Go grab a circle centered at the origin. And now what I need to do is measure the inside diameter using my calipers. And I get uh, 0.386. So I'm going to dimension that circle to 0 0.386. Hit OK. Exit the sketch. Select that feature. Extruded cut. And through all. Click Yes. And I can use Alt to show you that that is our really thin washer. So now I will simply save it as the um, thin washer. So thin washer from bag five. Good enough for now. Um, so uh, yeah, so naming is, so naming the files basically names the part itself. So this part, as far as SolidWorks is concerned, is called Thin Washer from Bag Five, which could be a problem when I try to make an assembly. And what an assembly is, it's a special type of SolidWorks drawing which sort of imports several other part files and then puts them together. Um, in relation to each other. So you could say have a shaft and a washer and a screw and you can put the washer on the shaft and then you can put the screw on the, the shaft itself as well. Um, you can put gears on it, you can put levers on it, you can rotate the levers and so on, um, but they're all in relation to each other. The problem is that um, the, uh, the parts are all named after their file names essentially and if you want to rename those files you basically have to go into all the assemblies and rename those as well and there's there's actually I think a, a tool a free tool that you can download um, that actually does that for you uh, which is quite convenient because it's extremely messy um, okay uh, let's try another part um, this part is the standoff with a with a a slot on one end and um, a threaded um, bit on the other. So this will involve something slightly more complicated than a washer. So I'm going to create a new part file. Okay. And so I'm looking at it and it's basically a very long cylinder. So we'll, we'll start out with a cylinder. Um, kind of like a washer. Uh, I'm going to measure the outer diameter, which says 0.252. Yeah, it's probably a quarter of an inch, but I'll go with that actual measurement, 0.252. So I will start a sketch on the top plane, draw a circle, snap the center to the origin, and dimension it to 0.252 in diameter and exit the sketch. Now I will extrude it. So how far do I extrude it? Well, let me go ahead and measure the length of the cylinder. It says 1.215 or 1.216, 1.215. All right, so I will extrude it. 1.215 inches blind. Okay, now I can scroll using the scroll wheel. So hit OK. So that's what our part looks like right now. So there it is. Now what we need to do is on the end we need to put the threaded bit. Now I said earlier that we don't actually put threads in parts because um, you know that would be like for example a um, it would just be an annotation on the diagram. But the thing you have to know, of course, is the outer diameter of those threads. So I'm just going to measure that. Okay, now it says 0.137. Now I know that these threads are of a certain um, measurement, 
Um, I think these are like number five something or other, maybe. Uh, yeah, I think they're 540s, I think I decided. Um, and there is a, a standard um, blank outer diameter that you would use, and then you would um, um, you would use a die of the right um, threadedness um, to put your threads into, but I'm just going to go with the outer diameter as I measure this. Um, so it says 0.137 inches, so I'm going to look down at this part from the top. Okay, that's the top. I'm going to sketch on top of that. Uh, select the face, use a circle centered at the origin. I'm going to smart dimension this to, what did I say? 0.134, I think? 0.137. Oh, 0.137, hit OK, exit the sketch, and now I will extrude that. So let me just scroll out a little bit. Okay, so by default it's choosing how much it was before, but let me measure the size of the threaded portion, and it says 0.315, so I'm simply going to say 0.315, blind, and there we go, hit OK, and basically we've got our two um, pieces. So basically this, this standoff is two cylinders attached to each other. Um, again, if you drew it, you would, you would draw um, one view like this, and you would give the diameter of this section, and you would give the diameter of this section, and then you would give the length of this section, and the length of this section, and then of course the material, the finish, the tolerance. So one thing that we haven't done at this point is put the slot at the end. Um, that's kind of an important feature to have because if you don't put a slot in there, um, you're stuck with hand tightening this thing. Um, so to put uh, a slot in the end basically means that you're going to kind of use a kind of like a cutting tool. So let me rotate this so that we're looking at the bottom. Actually, let me use the orientation. So there's the bottom, okay. And what I like to do sometimes is just rotate it to make sure I'm looking at the right view that I want. So what I want to do is draw a rectangle right across here. And I want it to be, of course, bigger than the cylinder because it's going to act as a kind of a cutting tool. Um, and I'm going to sort of measure this a little bit by eye because I don't actually have any feeler gauges yet. Um, but I'm going to use the calipers, which says that the slot is about uh, 0.036 wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, sketch on this plane. This time I'm going to choose the rectangle tool, um, and there's a center rectangle. So that's kind of convenient because I want the rectangle to be centered at the origin, and then I'm going to bring it out past the ends. Okay, now I have to dimension it. So I take my Smart Dimension tool and I dimension this side, which um, was supposed to be, uh, let me just measure it again, uh, 0.034. So let's say it's 0.034. Okay, now you notice that these sides here have turned black, which means that they have been constrained uh, completely. Um, so their distance is now specified. Uh, these sides, however, are still in blue because I haven't specified how wide this is. I've just said, oh, well, it's wider than the circle. So since I don't really care how wide it is, I'm okay with how wide it is right now. So I'm just going to take the Smart Dimension tool and say whatever length that is, that's fine. I don't really care. So now I'm going to exit the sketch, and now if I turn this around, you can see that I've got a rectangle stuck to the end face. 
And now, as you can guess, I'm going to select that sketch, that sketch is selected, and use an extruded cut. Okay, and you can see that it's going in by a certain amount. Obviously, I want it to go in by approximately the amount on the actual part, which again, I'm going to measure um, to be 0 0.05. So I'll say 0 0.05 and done. And there we go. We now have a cut. We now have a slot cut at the end. Um, if you want to get rid of that um, sketch that's actually showing up, what you can do is you can open this up and you can right click and then you can select uh, show, show, which actually turns it off. Uh, really? Is that what it does? Okay, apparently that really didn't do much, did it? Okay. Um, all right, yeah, I don't know why that, oh, yeah, it was because I had the sketch selected, see? If I have it selected, you know, if I have it uh, deselected, there, I just have the origin selected now. That's why that's showing up. Um, now I have nothing selected. There we go. So there's that part, done. So I will save it as... Um, for lack of a better term, standoff from bag five. Okay, so uh, those are three parts that I've done. Um, I think that that's probably enough for now. Um, in bag five, I've got a couple of screws, which should be easy to model. I've got a spring, which we're going to um, we're going to model. Um, Unfortunately, springs are not actually solid parts um, because they do tend to flex and they can stretch. So we'll learn how to do that. Um, we've got a gear, so that's going to be interesting. And then we've got um, some complicated lever type structure, so we'll leave that for last. So uh, until next time, I'm Rob. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. I found my new love He's got the intellect Yes, he's got the mind of A great philosopher A artist so sure of His place in history He's a mystery La da 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 I saw him on TV He looks so handsome And he's in a new movie In which he really does All of his own